Welcome to Box Free with Stephanie. Today I want to show you how to make some basic foods with simple ingredients from scratch. And I hope you discover cooking box free is fast and delicious. So let's cook together. Today we're going to make raspberry lemon crepes because it's summertime and it's just gorgeous. The berries are gorgeous, the lemons are yummy, crepes are delicious. So um, we're going to start and the first thing we're going to do is make lemon curd. Um, I mean you can totally buy lemon curd um, but I like to make my own because it's really pretty simple um, and oh my gosh it just tastes so good. So I'm doing two eggs. These are two large eggs that have been sitting out for like 30 minutes. Um, you want them pretty much at room temperature um, so that they are the the fats in the yolk are kind of warmed up and will blend better. So that's the point of that. Okay so I did two eggs. I'm gonna do a third of a cup of sugar and then I'm going to mix these together. There we go. Okay. And oh, I need my gorgeous whisk. Where is that at? Right here. So I have my pan kind of getting my stove warming up. Um, I'm going to whisk together my eggs and my sugar. I've got my little recipe like right here. I don't make lemon curd very often and I should just change that about my life because I love it and it's so versatile. You can use it on so many things, on pancakes and you know danishes or sweet dessert type things, on thumbprint cookies, just for the fun of it, right out of the bowl, all kinds of things. Okay, now I'm gonna add, because that's like, you know, nice and well beat together. I need lemon juice. I need a third of a cup of fresh lemon juice. So I've been doing some other lemon stuff here. Where's my lemon squeezer? Not there. Oh, it's over here. Hang on a second. Okay, so my lemon juicer. So I'm gonna try to measure into my third of a cup here. See if I can get it pretty close to a third of a cup. Because for um, curd, I do want to know how much liquid basically I'm putting in there. I don't wanna like, over juice it, you know, and have, where's my garbage? I don't know, over here. Um, have way too much lemon juice. So I do, cause a lot of times I just like put my, my juice right over the, um, the pan, the bowl and throw it in there. But I'm gonna actually measure today because I want to know how much I'm getting in there. So this is a second half. So my recipe says that it's one large lemon Looks like I might be getting close. Oh, no, this did not have very much, huh? Okay, this half was not very juicy. So now I'm on my third half and I'm almost at a third of a cup. And you could probably use jarred lemon juice from the store if you had to. Okay, so here's my third of a cup. So I'm gonna dump that in and then I'm gonna see how much more I have in here. Not much. Okay, so I'm just going to dump that in too. Okay, so that should be that. All right, I'm getting all kinds of stuff all over myself. All right, this is really hot already. I think I want to turn that down a little bit. Okay, so I did third of a cup of fresh lemon juice. Lemon juice. Now I need zest. So I'm going to um, use my little zester tool. Okay, so I have this gigantic one. I'm thinking it's going to be enough. I do um, big long pieces with this zester, which I don't mind. But if you have like a micro plane, what do they call it? Like a fine grater, um, you know, just do like, you know, and grate it the regular way without this fancy tool. Um, this is what I mean. One of these. If you have this style of grater with the really fine teeth, then you can use that. But I use this and get my large pieces of zest and then I just strain them out anyway so it doesn't matter and this is like really nice and fast for me. I don't really like using that other style when I'm trying to get zest because you have to just re like rotate it so much where this is just really nice and you can go all the way around really fast and I don't mind it. So if you, if you don't mind the big pieces you can use a zester like this. And then I don't usually measure this. I just guesstimate like that looks like three teaspoons. I mean, it's a tablespoon basically. So that's what it looks like. So I'm calling that good. Okay, so three teaspoons of lemon zest 
into my curd. Which would, this just really gives it a little extra lemon flavor. Okay, and now I'm going to put this on my heat. And the thing about lemon curd is just stirring it constantly um, to begin with because your eggs will start to cook and you want everything mixed in. And I need to add my quarter cup of butter, which is new, my room temperature butter, basically so that it melts quickly and doesn't have to sit here and wait for my, um, I don't want to wait for my butter to melt while my curd is heating up. So again, everything kind of room temperature for this dish. Um, so now I'm supposed to just whisk it for six to eight minutes until it thickens and kind of starts to bubble. Um, let's see, my, my butter is not melting, so this is definitely like not too hot, which is fine with me. I don't really want to start with my curd like too hot because I want it to slowly heat up so that I can get a beautiful smooth curd. And then once it's all done, I'm going to strain it through a fine sieve to basically get out all my chunks of zest because I don't want lemon curd with zest in it, especially these huge pieces. But if you use that fine grater and you have just like the angel hair of zest, then maybe you won't mind. And so then you could um, not strain it. But I always have the big ones. And I like my curd to be like ultra smooth and super silky. So I don't want any chunks in it. Okay, so now my butter is melting. And um, I'm supposed to whisk it constantly. But um, I'm gonna just let it go for a second while I make my crepe batter. So I'm gonna have to go back and forth really quickly. But mostly, again, this is just whisking it to make sure that as it's heating and thickening, you don't get any lumps and clumps anywhere. But I guess if you did, you would just strain them out. So, hey, yeah, no big deal. It all works out, which it usually, and then my thing gets kind of full of, um, what, zest. All right, so now this seems really hot. Okay, so I don't know if I can do two things at once here. This might not be my friend. It's already getting bubbles. Okay, so once you can see the bubbles coming, um, then that means it's starting to heat up. So I better keep stirring. Obviously the bubbles means it's starting to boil almost and I don't really want it to boil. What this does will just thicken and then once it's, it's like thick like a pudding and um, it's done basically when you're stirring it and the curd will keep the shape of the whisk or like you know you can see the whisk pattern because right now it's like soup you know as soon as you stop like everything goes away and it's flat so you'll know that it's done when you're stirring it and it's like pudding and it holds that shape you know like you could almost make a design in it or something um that's when you know that your curd is done and i realize i don't have a hot pad so and it's getting really thick i better turn my stove off a little bit here so it's starting to thicken and I'm seeing these like streaks in it, which I believe is hopefully just my, um, just my zest and my pan's getting hot. Woo, that's hot. Woo wee. Okay. So now you can see, now it's boiling. Okay. That's not what I want either, but I'm just going to turn this off. As long as you kind of keep whisking it really fast, then it doesn't really let the surface get too hot on the bottom there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call that done because it's holding the, the, the sh it's holding the shape basically is what I'm trying to say. So let me see here. I'm just gonna grab this and plop this down right there. Whoopsie, I got curd on my butter dish, which is hilarious. It looks like butter. Okay, now I'm gonna take that over there. I'm going to strain it. So I have two eggs hidden in here. Okay, so now you take your little spine mesh strainer and I don't know if you guys can see that. I got to pour with my right hand, so I'll show you in a second here. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, that's pretty hot. Okay, you know, like cooks get really used to like hot stuff. See how it comes right through? Let's see if I can do it this way. Look at that. Woo! So what's happening is all my zest is collecting 
um, on the bottom of my strainer. So when I stir it like that, it just comes like flying through because all these chunky zest pieces are in the way. See like all that? This, okay. But I want to like push all my curd out because I want every last drop. Now I'm going to take this and I guess I can stick it there. Okay, so now I've got to do more because I've got more, whoopsie, gorgeous lemon curd. Oh, looks so yummy. It's like just solid gold and it looks like gold. So you can call it that. See, it comes right through. And I've never done this once it cools, but I can't imagine it would work because it's the heat, you know, that keeps it really liquidy. And once it cools, I'm getting like every inch off of here. Um, once it cools, it won't strain, I don't believe, as beautifully because it's too thick. So you got to kind of do this right away. Okay, so this is just kind of slowly coming out. You can almost shake it out like that. It's kind of cool. And then this is all just beautifully silky smooth curd, which I guess I should taste it. <laughs> Yay. It's the best part. All right. Put that over here. All right, I'm going to take a bite of it and I had some lemon zest. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Okay, hang on. Okay, whoopsie. Oh my gosh, didn't need that to be on there. So now I got some charred lemon curd, which is fine because I'm not going to use it. All right, I'm really sticky. So let me just see all my lemon curd and my lemon zest on here. So you, you like that? Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Okay. So most recipes say to put a plastic, um, plastic wrap over this so that you don't get a film on it. But normally I don't really get a film or not a bad one the way you do with pudding. So I generally don't cover it. So my recipe probably, probably says to cover it because, you know, I'm going to tell you the way you should do it, but I'm not always going to do it that way. So um, that's why the recipe says to put plastic over it, but that's why I'm not doing it because it just doesn't seem to be a problem. And I'm going to use it in like 10 minutes. So that's the other reason why I don't think I need to worry about it. Okay, so now I'm going to make crepes with my lovely crepe pan. And we're gonna just start. So I'm gonna start heating this up. Um, I'm gonna need that I already licked off of. Okay, get a clean one. All right, so for this, um, I always make it in my blender and it always works out. So it's really nice and fast. So I'm gonna make um, one batter, one whatever, one, I don't even know what you call it, one recipe worth, I guess. Um, and that makes like 12 to 14 crepes. So I'm doing one and a half cups of flour. Okay, and then I'm doing, no, I was not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to do one and a half cups of milk. Okay, so this is how we fix this. We just dig in and we take a half a cup out. Luckily for me, whoopsie, I just missed my thing here. Um, there's my dogs when I need them. Oh. Um, Okay, luckily for me, oh, I was supposed to put my milk in first. Oh, gosh, you guys. Okay, well, we'll see how this turns out today. Could be a real disaster. I'm sure it won't be, but you never know. In theory, you're supposed to put your milk in because then your flour won't get stuck on the bottom of your thing. So I'm going to try to get this in the very bottom. We'll see. It'll probably be okay. But I always put my milk in first, and that's why it's first on my recipe, and that's why it says one and a half, and I thought it was the flour, but it was the milk, which I had pre-measured. That's okay. So the bottom line is one and a half cups of milk, one cup of flour, two eggs, which these don't have to be at room temperature, but um, when I'm making this recipe, I'm getting out my eggs for the, the curd anyway. So I get these out because um, I don't believe you can really let them sit out and it's not like in this wreck it, you know, if you have room temperature eggs to make your crepe batter, that's going to be just fine. Tablespoon, I don't have a tablespoon. Okay, oh, this is all full of my baking powder. Okay, I need a tablespoon of oil. So you could use melted butter if you want. I always just use peanut oil because it's so fast and easy. And I always have stuff that I put in them. So I feel like you don't really need that butter taste. 
But if you feel better, better butting, oh my gosh, if you feel better putting in butter, then just use butter. I just use peanut oil or whatever oil. Oh, that's kind of a lot of salt. Quarter teaspoon. All right, and then you just combine it in here really quick for a good 30 seconds. So we'll see how I, my mistake goes. Yeah, so I can see all my flour like stuck on the side, which normally does not happen because I start with my milk. But I'm just gonna scrape it down and let her run some more. And this is just a super watery batter. And this is now getting nice and hot. So we'll be ready to make some crepes. Oh, here we go. Okay, that's about it. So now a lot of places or a lot of recipes say that you should um, let your crepe batter sit for like an hour and I never have. I don't know, I just, I never have. And I always seem to be just fine and dandy. My crepes are just beautiful, I feel like. So I don't, I should ask my sister. She makes crepes a lot. Um, but. I think it's just to develop the gluten and whatever, you know, obviously it does something, but I, my point is I don't ever let it sit. I blend it up and I use it and it turns out just gorgeous. So if you don't have a crepe pan, you can pretty much use any nonstick pan. You just have to be able to get inside of it. So if you had like a regular frying pan, you just have to be able to, you know, get inside like that. Um, but crepe pans, I mean, this is a super old one and a super small one. A lot of times they're much bigger. And then there's the really big ones where you have the little like tool that you kind of like, like spread it around. But I just have my simple, simple one. I've had it forever. And I think uh, this holds about a quarter cup. So we're gonna start with that. I don't always measure, I just kind of pour it in. But the trick is to pour it in and like move it around to make it really thin. And hopefully your pan is hot enough, which mine is, feels like it. Okay, so yeah, that's, Plenty of batter. So you just want to pour it around and then it starts to cook pretty much immediately. And once it's all kind of even, that's it. You just wait. So I'm going to get my next thing ready. I'm only going to make two right now and then we're going to assemble. So this is kind of a slow process to make a bunch of crepes. But I have this out because when I am making a bunch, I put them all down on here to just cool off or whatever. Um, and I have in here, my whipped cream that I already whipped and did a little prep beforehand. So that's ready to go. Okay, so now this is so thin that it's pretty much cooked already. Like you can touch it and it's pretty much solid, bat, like um, not solid, well it is solid, but it's like cooked through. So a lot of people will flip their crepes and I don't always and you really want a thin spatula here to kind of scrape down and be able to get at them. But I'll flip it just to see how they come up like that so beautifully. And they're just paper thin and you just flip it like that. So mine is very pale because I don't really cook mine very long. I don't know why, I just never do. I like them pale and I don't like them to get too brown. But if you want yours to be a little more golden, just cook it longer. And you can flip it or you don't have to flip it. I generally don't flip it because I put it down and then I put it on my plate and I um, put my filling in. You can only see the one side of it. So I just feel like there's no point in really flipping it because it is cooked through and I don't need the golden. See now this one's a little more golden right here. So that looks nice when you fold it over. Um, and so that's kind of what you're going for with that. And then I'm gonna be done. So I'm gonna flip this just like that. So here's my next one. Okay, so I got it. I got to hold my hand pan in here so I can rotate it. And then I don't butter it every time either. Once it's like seasoned, it seems to be okay. So you just rotate it around till it all gets kind of even. See how it's like all even and not like all on one side and whatever. And you let it sit. And that's how you make crepes. It's really very fun kind of and easy. I'm gonna let this sit here for quite a while. I mean, because I'm not gonna flip it and then I'm gonna serve it. So. To assemble my, um, my raspberry lemon crepes, I do two crepes and then I do a strip of lemon curd, I do fresh berries, I fold it up and then I put whipping top, whipped cream on top and that's it. And this was one cup of cream, 
one tablespoon of sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla, just whipped until pretty stiff. I like my, my whipped cream quite stiff because this is a little bit warm and so I don't want it to just like become soup right away. So I like it stiff to give it a little more shape. Okay, so this one, I'm going to move this. And once they're done, they're pretty hardy. I mean, like you could, you know, play catch with this thing practically, it really works. So I'm gonna flip this over because this is, flip it over onto here, cause I'm pretty much done with it. Um, cause I'm not gonna flip it. And it's a nice golden color. Look at that. Okay, so I think that's too brown. Um, if I was gonna keep cooking them, I would not let it be as brown as that. But we're gonna eat them now. So I'm gonna get a fork so I can really be ready to eat. So again, you just keep making all your crepes and you get about 12 to 14 of this size. So then when you assemble, I take my two little crepes and I kind of do it like that. And then I take my delicious lemon curd, kind of spread it like that. A good tablespoon, I would say, on each little crepe because this is what is the amazing flavor. And then these gorgeous raspberries, you just load it up as much as you want. I mean, I don't know, I'm gonna do like that amount. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. It's falling over a little bit. So you can um, put these with whatever you want. If you want strawberries, mixed berries, blueberries, whatever. Okay, then I just kind of do a third, but I didn't do this right down the middle. So I've got like my big side that rolls over, which is kind of nice, cause then it almost seals it. Then you can kind of squeeze them together. There's your little crepes. Then if you wanted to get really fancy, you could do a little dab of curd across the top. I mean, this isn't very fancy because it doesn't look very pretty, but it's something. And then, or you can skip it on the top. And then I'm gonna do little um, balls. You could put this in a piping bag if you wanted. So I do different, um, I do different whipped toppings sometimes. It's just a matter of what you prefer. So on this one, I just did three little balls of whipped cream. And on this one, this person loves whipped toppings. So we're giving them five. So then if you wanted to like shave chocolate on it, sprinkle coconut, I mean, whatever you want to make your crepes even more delicious, but we are going to take a bite. So I think they're very pale. And if you don't like that look, just cook them longer so that you don't have such a pale crepe, but crepes are really kind of pale. So um, I think it's okay. Mm, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, we're gonna take two bites because this is just too good to do a one bite. Mmm. Mmm, so good. Yum. So, the lemon curd is really tangy. The raspberries are quite tangy. The whipped cream is like smooth and kind of like tones it all down. And then these are already like a cool, um, like not hot, I guess. Like they are, they're not cold, but they're not hot, which you can tell because my whipped cream is not melting at all. Um, and so these are a really nice thing on a hot day because they're kind of cool. And you could almost serve them all cold. I don't know that you want cold crepes, but they are, absolutely adorable and you could serve one you know you don't have to serve two or whatever um, and you can fold them different ways there's a whole bunch of ways to fold crepes by the quarters and um, like in a roll like to put less filling in and roll it up I just always do it this way because it's very easy and um, then you can cut it and you basically get like a fork full mm, that's it so raspberry lemon crepes are to die for you guys you gotta try them so Thank you very much for watching Box Free with Stephanie. I hope you like the show. I hope you make raspberry lemon crepes and your family thinks they're delicious or just make the lemon curd and they will love that too. And you could just put this in a bowl. A little bit of lemon curd, a little bit of whipped cream and boom, you'd have a fabulous dessert with a fresh raspberry on top. So if you want to skip the crepes, go for it. Whatever you want to do. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.